Welcome to Hair Blazers, the podcast where we empower you to disrupt the beauty industry starting with your chair and your salon. You can focus on running your business and tune in here to find out how to keep it moving forward. I'm Colleen Lamoran, the Director of Education and Business Development for the Verde Salon Group here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I'm Naomi Brain. I'm the Marketing Manager for the Verde Salon Group and for the Aveda Institute, Winnipeg. And I'm Roberto Sinopoli, owner of Verde Salon Group and owner of the Aveda Institute, Winnipeg. So today we're going to be talking about gender neutral pricing, the whys and the hows of it. Yeah, so a lot of salons, uh, especially salons that have been existing for a long period of time, do have that segmented pricing, um, you know, simply women's haircut, men's haircut. And one of the nice things that we did because we are a newer business was when we opened our salons, we decided to have that price be the same across the board. And, you know, in the years following, definitely that conversation around creating more gender neutral pricing was something that was coming up more and more frequently. And a lot of salons are in the position where they've traditionally had those two pricing separate and they're wondering, should I change? Should I not change? It's going to maybe create a lot of challenges for me if I do change. And I think there's a lot of reasons to make that change to begin with. So let's start with the whys. Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's a lot of reasons why. Um, first of all, imagine if you have a couple that both come to get their hair done at your salon and maybe it's a woman and a man and they both have short hair. They're getting a very similar haircut. Maybe it takes a very similar amount of time to do both services and maybe one is paying 35 and one is paying 50. It doesn't really make it sense. It makes no sense. Or for example, maybe that same couple, maybe you're, the woman has short hair and the man has long hair and the man is paying less money and the woman is paying more money. Whereas if it was reversed, they would still be paying more money. Well, and I think coming from like a stylist point of view, picturing, I mean, it'd be one thing if, if a, you know, a shorter haircut didn't take as much time or uh, as much resources, but shorter haircuts in most cases are taking more tools, more time. Um, there's more of a like flow to the experience. You know, you wash twice instead of once. Like there's, there's so much more to it in many cases that I think it makes sense right across the board, same pricing. Yeah. And you know, proud to say that we've been gender neutral since 2017, um, but it was definitely new to me. So when we opened calling, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that prior to my experience. I've been around the industry my entire life. I don't think I've ever paid for a haircut my entire well, <laughs> not within not within our city. Um, so it was it never really stood out to me. I never really put a lot of thought into it. Uh, and then when I was the director at the Aveda Institute, because our haircut prices were so low, there was just one price. Yeah. It was like a fifteen dollar haircut, and that was it. it. Didn't matter who walked through the door. Uh, and then when we were opening Verde, you had said we should really start yeah. with gender neutral pricing, and I couldn't quite wrap my head around it at the time because I was like, well. That's not how it's done, but of course that's, probably, that's <laughs> dangerous. That's dangerous. dangerous. Yeah, it's very thinking. dangerous. dangerous sorry. Like so, what was your thought process behind it? When did you kind of really become in tune with it, um, or really conscious about um, being gender neutral when it comes to our pricing? Yeah, I think, I, like you said, right from the beginning, that was something that was really important to me. And I'm trying to think back to why I even had that much passion behind it, and I think it came down to just my experience in the industry and seeing over and over again men coming out paying less for things. And I think I had the sort of, you know, pink tax kind of idea in my mind. And I was like, that's not fair. And I think I thought it's going to be changing moving forward. And it's going to be very difficult if we start with two different pricing models and try to even them at some point. Um, I also thought that, you know, our clientele would actually appreciate it, mostly the women, <laughs> in the beginning to say, hey, like, my husband should be paying the same the same price as what I'm paying. Um, and I think it's really worked out for us. I think there've been like a few, um, a few moments of teaching. And I think as long as you're really transparent as to why you're doing something, that people um, are for the most part understanding. And I think really important to note that our pricing is gender neutral, but so is the experience. Regardless of who's walking through the door, you're gonna get the same experience. We're gonna spend the exact same amount of time with you. Um, we're going to provide an amazing experience, um, whether it's going to be at the sink or in the chair, with the massage, the hot towel, whatever it's going to be. That truly is important when really trying to convey the message of gender neutral pricing, because 
if we're paying the same, we should be having the same experience. Absolutely. And, you know, if you do find that you have two different pricings and there's an experience gap between the two, how can you make up that experience gap to, you know, make that pricing make sense? And just to speak like for myself as a consumer, you know, I had a Pixie Cut for like six years or so. And I went um, to a salon that had gender neutral pricing and I found it so frustrating when I would like go by salons or I would maybe be interested in trying somewhere else. And I would see like women's haircut, 60 men's haircut, 35 or 40 or whatever it is. You know, I was like, okay, well I have short hair. Maybe I'm bringing in a reference photo of like a cool fade in the photos of a man. I was like, is that then technically like a quote unquote men's haircut? Like, like, I think Absolutely. essentially it's just like what makes it a men's haircut versus a women's haircut. Is it the haircut itself or is it the person who's going? Because right. neither of those things make sense. And also like in terms of, you know, making pricing truly gender neutral, it's like if you don't have, like if you don't think you have people who are non-binary coming to your business, you're not looking hard enough. Or maybe it's like, you know, you have a woman who comes to your business and she has a non-binary child and maybe that child would be interested in coming to your salon, but your pricing is, you know, intentionally, um, or excuse me, unintentionally excluding that person. So it's like, if you think that that's something that's not relevant to your business, you probably need to take a bit of a closer look. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Sorry, and I, I was going to yeah. bring up, you know, not only gender neutral or age neutral. Yeah. Right. Colleen, can you speak to? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the, the kids cut, um, is something that the kids cut. The kids cut. The kids has something cut. that's been brought up um, a few times before, and and I really feel confident that we're, again we're giving the same experience no matter who's in our chair. Um, whether it's you know I'm saying a kid, whether it's someone's child, I have guests that bring their kids in, um, and we're giving that exact same experience to them. So coming back to making the experience the same, um, I think that every salon is going to be a little bit different. For example, our business model, we have men coming to us who are here for the experience. They're here to spend a little bit of time. They're here to get a scalp massage and a hot towel and maybe a beer when they come in. We don't necessarily cater to the men who are like wanting to come in, you know, walk in without an appointment, have like a quick haircut, no wash and want to be out. We get that that's important for some people, but in our space, that's not who we're attracting. Makes sense. Absolutely. And even if you are in that instance, maybe you have a price for a haircut without a shampoo and a price for a haircut with a shampoo. Right. So it's still gender neutral. It's just. You're pricing based on experience. Right. And not based on like the gender of the person who's coming into your space. Makes sense. So there's gender neutral, neutral pricing. There's also um, like neutral pricing as far as kids are concerned. So again, there's people that believe different, different things when it comes to kids cuts um, for our business we give the same experience to kids and same thing. We have parents which bringing, they love, which they, which love. they love. Anyone who thinks that most kids don't love a scalp massage. Have you ever asked them? Because we have kids that absolutely can't wait to come in and get a scalp massage. And I think they really love being treated the same when they're coming in kind of like an adult, they probably feel. Absolutely. And if you think that, you know, no parent is going to bring in their child for a $90 haircut, you know, there was a woman, who very recently brought in her like twin four-year-olds and wanted to like have them both come and see like a very senior stylist. You know, it's like, there are definitely people who are, who are willing to pay for that experience, you know, for themselves as well as for their children. Absolutely. And it, another way around it too, is we have here, we have a lot of different pricing. We have our new talent. So we provide a experience, a vast, I should say a vast array of pricing, depending on what people's price points are. So we have a lot of, um, a lot of our new talent doing a lot of the kids cuts, same experience might take a little bit longer. Um, but I think that's a great option as well. For sure. So Roberto, I'm going to ask you, what are your thoughts on, you know, you and your beautiful wife, Karen, walking into a salon and her paying, you know, sometimes double the price that you'd be paying for a haircut? I, I probably wouldn't think twice about it at this point now. I you know if you would ask me that question, I've really never paid for a haircut. So <laughs> it's real, I'm, I'm a bad example for sure. But, you know, I, I don't think there's, I don't think any industry, any business I'm walking into, I would expect different pricing based on gender. Yeah. That 
just doesn't make sense. Yeah. It'd actually probably be surprising at this point in time if, if that were to happen. But I really don't think I have any experiences in anywhere I shop or anything that I'm consuming where it's it's based on gender. Yeah, I think, you know, just because it's been done like this for ever for as long as I can possibly remember yeah. doesn't mean it's necessarily the right thing um, continuing and I think for we sure. have to figure out some ways um, to change yeah. it up yeah and, and you know that change up can come with its own set of challenges for sure being able to you know explain to your guests you know what is the best way Colleen we probably see this when we have price increases um, or when you're trying to implement something new that goes against the norm with what you've been doing. You know, what is the best way to tackle that? What is the best way to address it with your team? What is the best way to just address it with your guests? I think like the number one thing is to not assume anything. I think right. I hear stylists so often being so nervous about price increases. And I'm not exactly sure where that came from, but I think if you know what you're doing is right, there's a reason that you're doing it and you stand behind it and you're transparent. Transparency is the other like huge thing. If you're explaining to people um, why you're doing something and making them understand there's a reason that makes sense, they're far more likely to like be okay with it and to be understanding of it. Yeah, I think from a marketing perspective, one thing that has served us extremely well through price increases through, you know, whatever we're navigating in pandemic. our business, pandemic is really clear, strong, transparent communication and providing that communication several times, several ways. Maybe it's an email, maybe it's a social media post, maybe you have a sign at your front desk as well, letting people know. Uh, typically what we do is we provide advance notice and we let our, our guests know the why. We say, this is the change that's happening. It's gonna be in effect as of October 1st. So they have some time, they know when to expect it and letting them know the why, the what, and the when. All of those things clearly and in several different ways. Maybe you have a mirror talker on the stations. Whatever that is, providing that communication in multiple ways makes sure that it actually gets across because one email, there's probably several people who won't be seeing that. And I think there's a lot of different ways that you can incorporate gender neutral pricing in your business. Um, and there are several ways that you can proceed with that as well. Maybe you have kind of two, um, two upgrades that need to happen along the way before you get there. Maybe you change, say for instance, you know, your men's haircuts are 30 minutes and your women's haircuts are 45 minutes. And that's why there's a difference in pricing right now. Maybe your first thing you do is you just rebrand the 30 minute is a short haircut and the 45 is a long haircut and rebrand it that way. And then moving forward, you take a look at the experience gap. Why is this service 30 minutes versus the service being 45 minutes? And then you can go ahead and update that 30 minute so it does become the longer service. And then you know your second tier, your second phase is actually bringing um, the experience to the same level and then the pricing to the same level. So there's definitely steps you can take um, to make it make sense for your business, whatever your structure is right now. Yeah, and I think if we bring it back to, you know, what things that uh, we've spoken about in previous episodes and for sure in future episodes, if you've built a relationship with the guest, price becomes indifferent to them to an extent, of course, um, but price won't be the decision maker. If they feel valued in your chair, if they feel valued as a human being, as a guest, and you've been able to build that relationship, then price becomes relevant. That's a, and that's giving your guests a, a voice, like going back to letting them know what's going on. Like I think that yes, being transparent is important, but giving them a voice, like if they want to, if they have a question or they want to discuss it, like giving them that, those opportunities sure. to reach out to you um, and have that conversation. And maybe you're going to lose some guests over it. Like you can't make everybody happy all the time. But I also think in especially this case, you're going to gain a lot more guests by becoming gender neutral. Yeah, and then there's the opportunity. If you've lost some guests, then you have the opportunity to attract guests that are okay with gender neutral pricing, that are okay in that price point. Absolutely, Absolutely. and your stylists are probably gonna be happy about it because if you know some of their services were less for the guest and then they're in turn making less in commission, if you bring all of those service pricings up to the same level, that's gonna be more income for the business, more income for the stylist. And one perspective that I wanna to mention too, and especially coming from the school, we see so many like gender diverse students in 2022 in hair school, you, 
there's a lot of different people and you may also be like losing a potential stylist if that's something that you're still providing um, is like having that pricing being very like gender specific. Um, and I definitely want to kind of close out with a bit of a story. So there was a guest who came in and she had been coming into our salon for a few years and she brought in her child and her child was um, probably like 16 or 17. And she was like, my child wants a, a gender affirming haircut and this is what they're looking for. Here are some reference photos. And is this something that you can do for us? And, you know, that experience probably wouldn't have happened if we had gendered pricing. And we were able to set up that, uh, that new guest with a stylist. And, you know, I made notes about our conversation. So the stylist would be aware when they came in for their service. And at the end of that, even we were just booking the appointment. That was the only conversation we were having. And that mom and that child were so happy and so overjoyed to be seen and listened to and that we would be able to serve them in the way that they wanted to be served and that just like was an experience that like even for me being able to to help connect them with that like that just like made my whole day um and doing what we do it's about making people feel good and we want that to be open to everybody in our business having gender neutral pricing has been a major advantage and whatever your current pricing structure is, there is definitely a way forward to create gender neutral pricing. So whether your pricing is based on a time gap, on an experience gap, or just the way you've always done things with clear communication and giving your guests advance notice, there's definitely ways that you can incorporate gender neutral pricing in your business. Thank you for listening. Make sure you share this episode with your team and subscribe to become part of the Hair Blazer community. Get out there and blaze the trail to a thriving business for years to come.